I'm in Austin, Texas. I was supposed to be driving a truck on this trip, but that fell through, so now I have a Miata. Let's just call that a happy accident. We're gonna talk all about this 2020 Mazda Miata RF, but first, information explosion. Helping protect me from the unrelenting sun is a hat from my friends over at Lone Star Helicopters and the sunglasses from Flying Eyes Sunglasses. If you like these glasses, and you probably should, click the link in the description below, use the promo code MICA, you'll get 10% off, and you'll help support our channel. All right, let's get moving. Interior, which is also kind of the exterior. To my eyes, when I look at the interior of the Miata, it seems clean and lean and stylized. Like it's not trying too hard, it's just sort of like casually sporty. So I like the aesthetic. You got the round vents, you got the equally round climate controls. I think what really makes the interior come together is this piece right here. The fact that it carries the exterior color into the interior. So it feels like this unified hole between the inside and the outside. As you might imagine, it's not a massive amount of space in here, but in the driver's side, at least with the seat all the way back, I'm quite comfortable. If I was much taller, it might be a little bit dicier with legroom, but headroom is actually pretty darn good. Go over to the passenger side, and it's a little bit tighter in terms of leg room, and there's a big bulkhead uh, by the passenger side left leg area. So I think it's a little bit less comfortable to be on that side, which is why it's very important to steal the keys. As for the seats, one of the problems that I have in almost any car is there's a lack of adjustable lumbar support. That is the case here. There's no adjustable lumbar support, but I am feeling pretty well supported. It's just a little bit tight in the shoulder region, but the side bolsters do not impede my ability to move my arms, which I'll be doing a lot because this is a car that's meant to be driven. Unlike previous generations of Miata, the latest Miata has a tilting telescoping steering wheel, which makes it much easier to dial in your ideal driving position. And in terms of cargo space, in back we've got 4.5 cubic feet of space, which doesn't sound like a lot, and it isn't, but it's enough. It's just enough that if you have like you and somebody else, and you have a couple bags on a weekend, it'll do the job just fine. Rear window test is something we are not doing. Armrest test, uh, a little bit far of a reach for both of my elbows if I want to keep my hands on the steering wheel, and I do. And this is very hard right here in this obvious spot where my elbow would land. Inboard, it's a little bit softer. There is padding, but right underneath that is very, very um, hard. So uh, I'm gonna give that two elbows and maybe the 25% region. By the way, downtown Austin is just lovely. Look at all these buildings, wow. And as for family friendliness, uh, there's not much room for a family. So unless you being gone and leaving your poor family alone makes everybody a little bit friendlier, this is not family friendly. Hey, have you subscribed to my channel? If you haven't, please subscribe to Micah Drives. At 100,000 subs, I'm gonna review a windowless white van. Style. I naturally find the look of the Miata to be charming. It's compact and size has a lot to do with how you perceive an object, but there's sort of a flowy vibe. It's uh, sporty, but not too, too sporty. I think it finds a really, really nice balance. And then this is the RF, which is the one with the retractable hard top. And I love the look of a target top. It's got this buttress design that I think is just beautiful. There are some complexities that we'll talk about in the remarks section, but I think aesthetically, the latest Miata is just a beautiful little car. What's most impressive to me is that 30 years on, the Miata has retained its original essence. It still feels very much like the first Miata that came out, though uh, I guess it would be even more like the first Miata if it had pop-up uh, front headlights. Does anybody make front headlights that pop up for the ND Miata? If so, tell us in the comments. If you'd like to see what I'm flying or driving between YouTube videos, you can follow me over on Instagram. Evie has kindly put my handle right here. Let's talk in motion. Ooh. Yeah. If you've ever driven in Austin, you'll know that some of the roads kind of suck. There's some big bumps around here, and it points out an interesting fact that the Miata is not as harsh riding as you might expect. It's not like a Cadillac, but here, look, here's a really good bump. Let's see what happens. It dealt with that bump really, really well. There's actually more body lean than you'd expect, too. 
The suspension allows the body to move a little bit, and uh, I had to tap the brakes there because that Corolla wanted to kill me. By the way, as I come to a stop here, I will point out that the brakes are exceedingly easy to modulate, coming to that perfectly smooth stop. Oh, that's nice. There aren't as many curves in Texas as I'd like, but I have found one. Let's see how the steering feels. What's so interesting is that when you steer the Miata, you realize that the steering isn't heavy. It's not doing what people think sporty steering should do. It's not like needless amounts of effort to get the wheel to turn. Reasonably light steering efforts. And the ratio isn't all that quick either. It's, it's not darty like you might imagine. The end result is that you have a car that's easy to drive, but very controllable. It's not edgy or twitchy. Off the line, I'm full throttle. Once again, there's not too much power. There's balanced intensity when you get off the line. The beautiful thing with the Miata is that uh, what you have is a basic package that right out of the box is a ton of fun to drive. Fun being the top priority, not necessarily speed or lap times. Uh, same thing with the tires. Uh, there is enough grip, but there's not so much grip that you can't, if you wanted to, get on a little bit aggressively around a corner, uh, have the tail come out just a little bit. It's a package that allows you to move the vehicle in the way you want to move it, and the limits are not crazy high. If you're getting paid to race and going faster than everyone else is a top priority, then Miata might not be your first choice, but the aftermarket can help um, backfill some of those abilities. But the top priority with a Miata is fun above all, and man, it does that so well. All right, let's use that nearly perfect 51-49% weight distribution to radically take a left. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Another key component in the Miata's fun quotient is this manual transmission right here. Six-speed manual, and it comes standard. It's not that much to upgrade to the automatic, but this is a really critical part because you get that super short transmission action. It does this nice thing when you're driving and you go over a bump, the transmission will bounce up and down, and you can feel this going up and down. It reminds you with every shift and every bounce that this is a very mechanical interface. This is anti-digital. Shifting for yourself might be a lost art, but it is a fun lost art. And as I'm uh, sitting here at the stoplight, there's a green. Clutch effort's not too bad, pretty easy to manage on that uptake too, so it's a very easy car to drive. Look at that, little doot doot, third. I think for maximum effect, I might prefer driving the Miata in a state with a few more turns, but, oh, well, there's a turn. Let's see what happens. We've got an on-ramp, and then third. <laughs> so when you come off, the nose tightens its line just a little bit. Interestingly, when you get on it, the tail will come around a little bit too. You can point the nose by coming off throttle or getting on throttle, which is a very fun thing to play with. I was about to complain about Texas' lack of uh, curves, but Austin provided. As you might gather, I am enjoying driving the Miata. Let's talk emotion factor. Ooh, guys, the emotion factor is very strong with the Miata. For me, I have a bit of reminiscence about the Miata from a long time ago. I thought it was a very, very cool car when I was young. And driving it now, what's neat about it is that it really exists for only one purpose, which is to have fun. Like, there's no reason why you would buy a Miata other than for the joy of driving. That is its sole function. The Miata moves with a lively spirit. You have the uh, availability of open air uh, fun with the wind and the sun. It looks nice and sporty, but friendly still. Yes, I moved emotionally. If you're feeling moved emotionally to buy a Miata of your own, check the Kelly Blue Books listing link in the description below. Remarks. Operating the top is quick and easy. There's just a little switch right here. You do have to hold it down. You can't push and release, but the operation is quick enough that you can just throw the top down for quick jaunts. If you're just going to the coffee shop and then you want to close it up for security, you can uh, flip it right back up with, uh, with minimal effort. And you can operate it in motion, but not very quickly. You have to be going very slow uh, in order for the top to move. Right turn. Whee! 
The car I'm driving is the Grand Touring Trim, which is the fanciest one, uh, and it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration. If you get the Club Trim, you also get that, but not on the base car, which I kind of dislike. Another dislike is the fact that the touchscreen stops working if the car is in motion. Why did you make a touchscreen if I can't use it while driving? Consequently, if you want to use Apple CarPlay, you have to use this little wheel down here to jog back and forth to select the thing that you probably should just be able to touch. It's annoying. And as long as I'm complaining, the placement of the controls here for my body, I have to do T-Rex arms to operate the knob or, or control the volume. It's a little bit awkward. Excuse me while I stop and get some gas. I have gas, I am ready to continue. As I turn some of that gas into fun. One exterior bit that surprised me is the presence of a whip antenna on the right rear fender. You don't see those much anymore. Oh good, another turn. Whee. Whee. So I'm cruising along at about 50 miles an hour here. If I put the windows down, it's louder and windier, so the normal move is to put the windows up and that quiets things. And it does, but it also concentrates wind noise right here next to the driver's left ear. In some ways, just from an annoyance perspective, I'd rather have more general wind noise than less but targeted wind noise right there. It's like being next to the ocean or having a mosquito fly around you. On the club and grand touring trims, there's a Bose nine speaker audio system with these headrest speakers. I guess the idea is that uh, with speakers this close to your brain, uh, I guess your ears probably more likely, uh, that you'll be able to hear them really well. You kind of can't. It doesn't really help all that much. Um, in terms of audio systems, it's okay. I wouldn't necessarily go up to the higher trims just to get that audio system. However, I do like some of the standard features that are included on even the base level Miata. Lane departure warning and blind spot warning are both included, as is smart key access. That's one of those deals where like in my um, uh, intense entitlement, the idea of having to reach into my pocket and push a button to open the car door is inconceivable. Now I've evolved beyond that. So even on the base Miata, you don't have to do that. The Miata RF with the retractable hardtop is about $2,800 pricier than the standard Miata. I don't know if it's necessarily worth it unless you really, really love the aesthetic. I really love the aesthetic. Or if you desperately need the security of a hardtop. I think a really good way to invest your money is the $595 it costs for this paint job. Mazda's Red Soul Crystal Metallic Paint is just gorgeous. And I think all cars should be painted it. I don't actually think that, but I think it's a really nice paint color. Uh, if only there weren't a poop-covered Fiat 500 in front of me blocking me, this would be a very fun corner. Is the poop slowing you down, Fiat? It's not just the weight, it's also the aerodynamics. As mentioned earlier, you can get an automatic transmission for your Miata, but if you do that, on the Club and Grand Touring trims, you'll be missing out on Bilstein dampers and a limited slip differential. And if you want to do proper donuts with two tires spinning, you'll need a limited slip. So, you know, maybe get the manual. Are there any remarks I've missed? If so, tell us in the comments section, label them remarks, get in on the game. Synopsis. Snap, I'm gonna slow down a little bit uh, because uh, we got a Ferrari over our right shoulder. Ooh, side strikes, cool. Ferrari 512 has graced us with its presence. I'll just slot it right back here. Sometimes synops in cars, it can be difficult. No way, I have got it, I've got it, I've got it. The Miata is small, quite agile, and a joy to behold. Uh, to me, the 2020 Mazda MX-5 Miata RF is the Congress Street bat of cars. If you haven't been to Austin, if you go to Congress Street, there's a bridge there, and uh, nightly, the bats emerge for their nightly feeding. Everybody just kind of hangs out and watches them emerge. It looks like something out of the dark night. It's very cool. If you haven't done so already, uh, follow me over on Instagram. I'm this guy. If you have any questions, I'm happy to uh, engage. I mean, unless you get super weird, in which case I'll block you, but uh, most everybody's very, very nice. Please subscribe and like this video if you liked this video and you want to see more of them. At 100,000 subs, I'm gonna review a windowless white van. Ooh, don't be a jerk like that uh, Tesla that ran that red light. As long as I'm just giving out admonitions for what you should and shouldn't do. 
If you're so inclined, you can support me over on Patreon. Don't feel obligated. That's just a nice thing, but some people asked how they could support the channel, and that is one way you could do that if you felt like it. No pressure. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to enjoy myself as I blast around Austin in a little red streak of joy and wonder. And with that, come get your high five. Ugh.